things out a bit more and look potentially for the three-point shots without fouls on the interior as the jump and the game is underway. Chelsea Gray and guarding inside. That's Milich trying to guard Asia Wilson and Asia just blows by. And that's where Minnesota really misses Sylvia Fowles. The matchup with Asia Wilson with the way that she is playing right now. Ooh, that's a tough assignment. Their leading rebounder, their leading scorer, Sylvia Fowles. 16 points, 10 boards per game, and they're without her. There's a give and go, finger roll good. That's Nikolina Milich. This between these two teams. I think it's going to be who can establish paint points. Yes, the Aces like to shoot the ball from the perimeter, but keeping the pressure on the defense inside will open things up. Just the second start for Milich on the season. The rookie out of Bosnia and Herzegovina and stepping on the sideline. It was Chelsea Gray. It's going to go the other way. A matchup, Chris, that I'm going to be watching is Jackie Young, yeah, Jackie Young and McBride. Because McBride, the first time these two teams met, did not score a point. Jackie Young's defense was tremendous. And all that travel on Milic as she looks confused but didn't quite get the dribble down in time. Uh, you're right, though, that matchup. And McBride, who had come off an incredible game prior to that after getting back from Turkey, 0 for 4 shooting for her, no points. And it was Jackie Young guarding her the entire way. There's Hamby on the drive, can't get it. Batted out of the stay with the Aces. That's just that movement without the ball by De'Erica Hamby. She's got it down. Well, it's the movement by De'Erica Hamby, but also Kelsey Plum. She is always a threat. And when she's a threat, a track two, she's a willing passer as well. Jackie Young in the lane. That one did everything but drop. Now, Ariel Powers was the Minnesota Lynx that really hurt the Aces the first time these two teams met. Powers has been playing so well. Seventh year player, three in white for the length. Wilson stepped back off the back of the rim. Rebound down to Dauntus. Didn't see Dauntus in the first meeting, and that was back in May when these teams met up. When the Lynx played with Sylvia Fowles, a lot of teams, and the Aces did as well, they worked on having rotations, double team on Sylvia Fowles. Without having Fowles on the floor, you're going to see a lot of one-on-one -on -one accountability defensively. There's Big Sill watching on the sideline, honored prior to the game. Give him a little get basket. All-time leading rebounder in the WNBA. Just remarkable what she's given to the game. You don't want to see her sitting on the sideline. You want to see her out there. Is that one short? Wilson keeps it alive, and it's ripped out of her hands by Dauntus. This team's met up on May 19th right here in Las Vegas as Ray almost gets the takeaway. And it was a 93-87 win for the Aces. Luke's never led in that one, but this is a very different looking team right now. Here's McBride. She's averaging 14 points per game. Tries to go high-low. It ends up in the hands of Dantas, and she scores. Yeah, Dantas is such a dangerous post player because yet yeah, you got to respect her from the perimeter, but she also can get it done inside. Floater from Plum, no good. The Board by Milich. She'll bring it up. Skips it down to Powers. High off her straight through. Ariel Powers drops it in. And it's a big punch by the Lynx here. Up 7-2 to start it. Yeah, the Dallas game. The Aces got off to a slow start. And a lot of it had to do with breakdowns defensively. That last score by Minnesota, they weren't matched up in transition. Yeah, some miscues early on, and they were finally able to put it back together. But the Aces were doing things at times that you just didn't typically see. They were down by 16 at one time in the first half in Dallas in their last game. Chelsea Gray, as the Aces got it back, gets fouled down low. And Chelsea Gray <laughs> off the backside of Kayla McBride. You gotta always see the basketball. She's sneaky, that Chelsea Gray, as you you can bet that Kayla McBride's thinking, I know that play. I've seen that before. That is that is just wrong. 
But says you're you're looking checking the inbounder. You also have five shooters for the aces out there. Everybody, you got to be aware everybody is. You almost need two sets of eyes. <laughs> you do. Too many options. Both free throws good for Chelsea Gray. As Jefferson uses the high screen and hits it. Mo Jefferson, six-year player, traded to Dallas in 2019 and then signed this year by Minnesota. What a pickup for them as Gray gets her shot blocked. McBride's going to push it. Powers. This one short. Long rebound, though. Back to the links. Shot clock. Down the four. Down the one. And somehow, Powers got the shot off, but can't stick it. Now the Aces try to push some tempo. Fake one way, go the other. Asian Wilson with the finish. Oh, that'll get the crowd on their feet. Look, that's why I'm hoping Chelsea Gray is an all-star because she's going to make those kind of passes should she be on the all-star team. Absolutely. You got to vote for her. As that one won't go. Vegas had missed their last five field goals. And finally, that last make as Hamby gets fouled. Here's the thing the Aces have to be concerned with is the high ball screen and the quickness of Mariah Jefferson. The lane is so open, it's hard to find that coverage. But you look at that no-look pass by Chelsea Gray. It's almost like they've got telepathy on the court. They know where to be and trust that she's going to get them the ball. Yeah, they don't even have to speak it. You're right. It just knows <laughs> where it's going. I think Chelsea's got something going with the basketball, too. The basketball understands where she wants it to go. I talked to her last season about how she was able to deliver the passes, and she said, you know, at times it may be the previous play, I see something that could happen. It's like she takes a snapshot or a picture, and then she can put that in that Rolodex. Next time down, she knows the opening's going to be there. Now that's helpful out on the floor. Don just tries the three, can't get it. Hamby gets the board. One-point game. I love that low post-up base that Asia Wilson has. She's so strong from her waist down. <laughs> Wilson was wanting some contact, doesn't get it. Demiris Dantas on her, the Brazilian and eighth-year player. She missed 12 games because of a foot injury. They did not have her the last time these teams met up. Jefferson hits it. Another three, a team that only averages five per game. And they've got a couple of them already here in this first quarter. Well, Mariah Jefferson is the ideal point guard for Shell Reef's system. She's a scoring point guard. She's good off the ball screen. Great body control by De'Erica Handy. That slight hesitation left her open and finished by Handy. Come off the double-double in Dallas. Hamby picked up her 2,000th career point the last time these two teams met up, as that one's much more on the mark for Dantas. And we talked about in the open, Minnesota is that team that is hungry for a win, and they're playing extra motivated, knowing they are shorthanded without Sylvia Fowles. Wilson was triple teamed, and Paul comes back with a triple. The unselfish play of the Las Vegas Aces. When you see two, give it up. Wilson had multiple options there. Shot from Dantas, no good. And it's Milich knocking it off the leg of Jackie Young. We got a good one going on here. Minnesota is up by two. Part of the three-part series documenting that 1996 team that was really a key part of kicking off the WNBA. And I'm going to tell you, I laughed, I cried, I was so moved in, in watching that. I can't wait to you all, everybody to see all three parts. Uh, it's been really spectacular to see all of the coverage and the footage and to talk to the players and I remember those games. I was there watching as a fan, and, and you're right. It was 